So what I thought we might do is I'll just go through these. I'll say a few words on each of them, but not actually do the problems the first pass. And then we can spend more time on anything that people want to spend more time on. So on a kind of, you've got 2x squared, times the sine of x cubed. I mean, on a kind of meta level, I've told you that, I mean, this looks a little like parts, but I've said that parts won't be on this test because it's in chapter eight. On a less meta level, if you try to do parts, this would be your u, and this would be your dv, and then you would be able to integrate the sine of x cubed, so parts would fall apart anyway. What you have instead, you have an inside function, x cubed, and you more or less have the derivative of the inside function. You're off by a constant. You have 2x squared instead of 3x squared. But this is our signal to try u substitution. u equals x cubed. Two is an inverse trig function. You can rewrite 4x squared as the quantity 2x squared, and then you can do a little u substitution. Again, three at first blush, it looks like, you know, because I, I talked about powers of sine and cosine in chapter eight, but you don't need the trick of chapter eight, the rewriting odd powers and then using the Pythagorean identity, all that stuff. If you let u be the sine of x, then du will be the cosine of x dx, and you'll have u squared du. Four is tricks. Uh, um, so if you see four, I don't know if the, if the correct answer is going to kind of jump out at you, but so we might try U substitution. That sometimes works, just letting U be the denominator of the fraction. It doesn't work here because if we let u be this denominator, du would be 4x cubed, and we don't have an x cubed up here. So we think this is what I'll just talk about right now. So we think, what's this look like more than anything else? And it looks kind of like an inverse tangent, like an arc tangent. And I mean, we have, in the homework at least, we've seen examples where, you know, if we let u be x squared, then this denominator would become one plus u squared. And that's an inverse tangent, assuming, assuming that we have a one up there, it's an inverse tangent at least. Well, du is two x dx. So that does turn in the du, 
and then you can proceed with the what's happening here. Proceed with the arc tangent. Let's see, I think I told someone they could use a note card on the test. I feel like I probably did that with some online student. So like maybe you can write that. I mean, I have to admit confession time. I always struggle to remember. I mean, the arc tangent I remember, but the arc sign or the arc secant, I'm always like, I don't remember which is which. So I wouldn't necessarily stress about memorizing that. But you should certainly be able to use them. So five, what's five look like? It be U substitution. It is U substitution. Fives may be a little tricky because I mean five and four both kind of look like the arc tangent. And I'd say five looks more like the arc tangent than four did. But if you let u be four plus r squared, again, it's not my goal to, at this moment in time, work all the way through these, but it's probably easier to see this written down than to hear it spoken word. If you let u be four plus r squared, du, is 2r dr. So the denominator will turn into u squared. The numerator, you'll have to mess around with it a little. You have a five instead of a two, but it's it works. I mean, you can do the u substitution. You'll end up with um with some kind of constant. I think a five halves out here, and just a quick reminder. That the way you integrate something like one over u squared is to rewrite it as a negative power. Then you can bump the power up to negative one and divide by negative one and take the integral that way. And six is very similar. Um, or maybe, um, yeah, I, I mean, it's very similar. It's a little tricky maybe, again, just because this one plus x squared makes this look like an arc tangent, but the arc tangent requires you to just have a constant up here, not a two x. So with six as in five, you're doing a U substitution. You can let U be this denominator. Um, one difference in six is that you're going to wind up with one over U. And one over u, let's remind ourselves, is sort of the exception uh, to the method we talked about here. 
you can't just bump negative one up and then divide by it. That would give you a division by zero error. Integrating one over u is done using the natural logarithm. So seven is another of those things that maybe at first blush looks like integration by um, parts because we've got just a product here. But again, I mean, beyond parts not being on the test, parts isn't going to work here. Um, there is no choice of you and at least I don't think parts will work here. My uh, instincts say that if we try to do parts, we're going to get something pretty messy. If we try to do parts, we'll wind up with, yes, with the cosine squared over the sine. We won't be able to integrate it. Um, But what we have here is a composition. We've got an outside function, the natural log, and an inside function, the sine of x. And the derivative of this inside function shows up here. So the old, I mean, the u substitution trick letting u be the sine of x, then this cosine of x dx will turn into du, and we'll get the integral of the natural log, which is maybe, maybe trickier than I'd want to we did see how we can integrate using the natural log, but that required parts. I might have, uh, this is an old test, I didn't really uh, look through it. This problem is probably a little too tricky because I think it requires chapter eight material. So problem eight, again, looks like something from chapter eight. We've got these powers of trig functions, but just like it was the first or the second, I'm not going to scroll back, but just like an earlier problem, you can do this using u substitution. If you let u be the tangent, and this secant squared, and this dx that I very sloppily didn't write in will turn into du, and you'll get the integral of u. Uh, nine, there's nothing really special here. I just figured, you know, the fundamental theorem being so fundamental, we'd probably better do at least one problem where we use it. 2r e to the r squared from zero to one. This is U substitution, and I tend to think, I mean, I didn't emphasize it. I don't know, honestly, if I even mentioned it. In the textbook, there's this whole thing about changing limits of integration. That's something that students in my experience don't want to do, and it's completely unnecessary. So why force it? 
um, we'll find the indefinite integral using u substitution, and then we'll write it down here. U equals R squared. DU is 2R dr. So there's E to the U. Here's DU. The integral of E to the U is E to the U. For form's sake, I'll write the plus C, but we won't use it when I copy that up. So e to the r squared plus c if you uh plug in one, you get e to the first. If you plug in zero, remember that anything to the zeroth power is one. You could also, I mean, give me a decimal, two it will be. 1.7 something, I think. And at this point, for like area problems, it's really going to be good to have a calculator. I mean, one is required for this class. As, um, just to do the graphing, like if you um, if you don't remember or you can't figure out what this region looks like, or you can't figure out what the top function and what the bottom function is, you can. Let's see. Well, you won't have Desmos, I suppose, on the test. But give me a second to get the calculator loaded up. So what well, let me remind myself. Um, so, so, sorry, I feel like I'm talking like a zombie suddenly, just a little tired. Okay, so we've got x squared and x. Let me clear that. There's x squared. Clear that. There's x. Uh, if you have some order calculator, you might get something a lot less nice looking, but this is the graph. And I mean, I guess I did this problem or something like it semi-recently. If your default zoom, you'd see this and you might see, well, there's some kind of region here, but I can't quite make it out. And you'd, uh, you'd go to where this, looks like it is, and you could zoom in. Um, so the x is the big function, the x squared is the small function, it's big minus small, so x minus x squared. Uh, there are no limits of, let's see, that was not what I wanted to share. There are no limits of integration here because this is an enclosed region. These two curves are like the shore of a lake. They're keeping a region locked between them. Um, I'm going to try not to make anyone's life more difficult than it has to be on the test. You've got to find where this curve ends and where this curve 
I mean, this region begins, and those are the points of intersection. X squared equals X. And, um, I mean, hopefully you can just look at the graph and see, well, zero works and one works, but your calculator does have, if, if the problem on the test is a little more complicated, your calculator does have this intersect feature hiding in the calculate menu. So we can tell it what the curves are and we can say we think the intersection is somewhere around here and our calculator will give it to us. It will tell us that it's one. Uh, speaking of old problems, I apologize. We surface area I have kind of sentiment for. It was what I uh, lectured on when I was interviewing for this job, but it's also one of those things where I was like, I don't know if we really need to uh, need to spend like two days on this, so it got cut out. Arc length, um, this is really just, do you remember the formula, which is um, maybe kind of, if I'm letting you have a note card, do you have the formula written down? But I mean, you do want to be careful. I mean, even if you have a note card and people you know, if you get a little messy and you now have like five formulas and you can't tell which is which, the surface area is the square root of one plus the derivative squared. It's that one. So you see that we're telling you not to evaluate. Find the volume of a solid of a region bounded by x squared and x around y equals one. So around y equals one. So this is the washer method. You've got an inner radius and you've got an outer radius. And the inner radius and the outer radius are both gotten by, by subtracting, you know, this upper value minus the lower value. In, in the lecture in class, most of the examples I did had the curve below the uh, region, but The inner radius is always the smaller one. So I start up here, I draw a line down, I hit a curve. Okay, the first curve I hit is the inner radius. And then I hit a curve, I keep going, I come out the other side. The second curve I hit is the outer radius. And then These problems are, can be messy, and they can be 
tedious more than anything else. We've got, we set the integral up to take that. We've got to FOIA everything out and um, combine our like terms. And then we'll have a polynomial that we can work with. Let's see. Find the volume of the solid generated by following curve around the x-axis. Okay, so um, these are not in order of difficulty, I don't think. Let me take a quick look at negative x squared plus one on the calculator. Let's see, negative x squared plus one. Right. So, and and then I'm told I tell you the other. Boundary is the x-axis is y equals zero. So we're taking this region up here and we're rotating it around the x-axis. And because you see the difference here, this axis of rotation is not a side of the region we're rotating. I mean, it touches the region once here, but that's a different situation. From this, where we've got a full side of the curve. And here, there's no inner and outer radius. There's just a radius and it's pi, the radius squared. And I guess the only thing I'd caution is new share. Wait. Ideally, we would not make the kind of mistake I just made, which was to forget what the curve looked like and copy it down wrong. So again, these radii are always, you know, whatever's on the top minus whatever's on the bottom. Here, this quadratic is on the top. What's on the bottom is just to zero, so negative x squared plus one, the top minus zero, the bottom. We would again, I would, come on, work with me. Okay, we're sharing the calculator, it says, but I don't see it. Okay, we could again just use the calculator, either its intersect feature or visual inspection to see that we're going from negative one to positive one. Let's see, that's not what I wanna share. And then, L'Hopital's rule, always kind of this weird little anomaly. The only thing we do in this section that in this um, half of the, of the uh, semester that has nothing to do with either 
um, a geometry or integrals, just you remember Lobatow's rule. And again, what I often do, I mean, the test isn't written. I often have multiple limit problems and sometimes you need Lopetow's rule and sometimes you don't. So again, I, I stressed this when I was teaching that material, but you can't just, you know, use it without thought. Lopetow's rule is for indeterminate forms. In this case, it is, um, this is going to, zero, and this is going to one. Oh, I was in a tricksy mood today. I said this, or whenever I wrote this, um, this isn't L'Hopital's rule. Zero divided by one is not indeterminate. Zero divided by one is zero. You can just plug is zero in. I kind of suspect that was that's me being tricky and more a typo. I kind of suspect that this was supposed to be the limit as x goes to infinity, in which case you would use L'Hopital's rule, but you do always have to check before you use that rule. So now I kind of tried to give the executive overview. Is there anything that anyone would like to see in more detail? Possibly over ten. Yeah. So this is the area problem, the x squared and the x. And we uh, looked at the graph and we saw that here the um, x, I mean, if we look at the region they enclose, the x is bigger. Did I? I hope I didn't. Uh, no, I don't know what I, I don't guess I didn't write anything down. Um, so when you're doing area, it's just the upper minus the lower. There is no, um, there is no, nothing being squared. There are no pi's, just x minus x squared. Uh, this region starts at zero, zero equals zero squared. It ends at one, one equals one squared. We plug one in, we plug zero in, and then that's, I, I never have, I mean, I like decimals. I think that in general, they're easier to interpret than a fraction, but whether you give me a fraction or a decimal, I don't mind. It ends up being one six. So I will say there is no, I mean, again, I'm not, you know, trying to trick people, but this is just I found an old calculus test and I put it on to Canvas. You know, I'm, I'm not guaranteeing there will be 
any kind of one-to-one -one match between problems, um, something in particular that I just sort of noticed as I went through this, there's no like rotate around a vertical axis or there's no find the area, but the upper and the lower curve change. So it's easier to use horizontal rectangles type of um, problem. And I would say there probably will be something like that on the test tomorrow. Other than that, is there anything else that anybody really wanted to see? Can you do the arc length one? Yeah, so let's see. Set up, but do not evaluate the integral. Let's see, from zero to pi of y equals the sine of x. So the arc length formed the creates these really messy integrals, hence the instruction not to try to evaluate it. But it's plugging and playing with this form to the, the square root of one plus the derivative squared. So y is the sine of x, y prime is the cosine of x and y prime squared is the cosine squared of x. This, this looks like it should be something you can do something, you know, with, with using the Pythagorean identity, but it isn't quite. You need a subtraction to use the Pythagorean identity. And then it says, tells you where you start and where you stop. Start at zero, stop at pi, the integral from zero to pi. Could there be one that we have to evaluate on the test? Um, I mean, there could be, it would have to be, you know, it would have to be simple enough so that you could, and I'm trying to think what that would, what that would be, yeah, maybe, like maybe the square root, no, the square root would, yeah, I, I mean, there, there's no reason there couldn't be, except on a practical level, there are very few um, functions whose arc length you can evaluate by hand, especially, again, since we're not doing any of the chapter eight stuff and can't use, like, well, I guess, I guess, trig substitution.
right? Occasionally that you take an arc length because you've got the square root, you've got the one squared. But yeah, I, I mean, there's no reason you couldn't be. There's no reason, well, of course, we're not actually doing um, 11, but anything where it says that, that's just for, for student ease. But yeah, there's no, you know, 13 you are, 12 you aren't. It just depends on whether the integral is uh, easy or not to take. I shouldn't say easy, but... Uh, And that brings us about to the end of class. And I'll get, let's see, for the online students, I'll get this written up. I'll get it uh, sent to your proctors shortly. Good luck, everyone.